Happy Sabbath, church family. It is so good to see all of you here today. I want to welcome you all to another day of much blessings. I also want to welcome all those who are watching through Facebook Live, Instagram, social media. Welcome. I'm so glad you have tuned in to watch this service today. So before we start, let's have a word of prayer. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for this day. Thank you because you have always been so gracious to us and you are always willing to forgive us, Father. I pray as we start this service, may you give us your spirit. May you guide us through your word today and help us to be instruments that you can use every single day. In your name, amen. All right. Hello, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Songs for the honor and glory of God.
Grateful Living presents Taste and See. The story for today, The Love of God. My name is Beatriz Rivas. When I was a child, my father always told me, never forget that you should put God first in your life. And remember, you should return his tithes and give your offerings first, and then care for everything else. God did many miracles in our home growing up. Even though we were poor and sometimes money was lacking, we never lacked food in the house. God always supplied the basic needs of our home, and we were very happy. When I married Miguel, we decided to put the principles of putting God first into practice in our home. We have seen for over 20 years of our marriage that God never fails when we put Him first and are faithful to Him with His tithes and our offerings. Some time ago, we became very concerned because we had a problem that we did not know how to solve. What's wrong, Miguel? You know, I'm very worried about our car situation. You know, one car is damaged, and we don't have enough money to fix it. And the other one is already failing. At any moment, we're gonna get with no cars in the house. I know, I know what you're saying. But you know, we've always trusted God. We've always given Him our problems. Why don't we finish eating and, and let's purposefully go and pray and give Him everything. I, let's see what He does, okay? You're right, let's do that. Okay. That day, we prayed to the Lord, asking God to give us resources to fix the cars or some way out according to his will. A few days later, God surprised us greatly through a phone call from a friend. That phone call would change our situation. Hello? Hi, Beatrice, how are you? Hi, I'm doing good, and you? Good, good. I called to tell you that my husband is buying a new car for his work, and we decided to bless someone with the current car we have, and God put your family in our hearts. We would like to know if you would accept our car that we have as a gift. I was truly speechless as we hadn't told anyone about our problem, and here God had provided for us. I thanked her very much, and she even told me that if it didn't work out for us, we could sell it and keep the money because they only wanted to bless us. For us, it was a great miracle, because when we got to her house, we imagined the gift card would be pretty old and run down. But they pointed to one that was in good condition, much better than what we imagined. God had greatly surprised us. Glory be to his name. We are very grateful to God because he provided this truck when we most needed it. That's right, and we want to encourage you to be faithful to God as well. Always give back your tithe and your offerings first before anything else. You'll see many blessings from the Almighty. Taste and see. God blesses us, right? And that's so beautiful. Each and every day, God gives us blessings. And as long as we're faithful, he will provide. I will ask the people who are going to help with the offerings to come forward. Before we start, let's have a quick word of prayer. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for always being faithful. Thank you for giving us blessings each and every day, even when we don't deserve them, Father. You are so good to us. I pray that you may give us your Holy Spirit today. In your name, amen.
Thank you so much, Carlos Lopez, for the beautiful music. Before we start with this awesome discussion, the word that God has given us today, let's have a word of prayer. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the opportunity to be here today and to worship and to talk about you, Father. I pray as we get into this topic 
May you prepare our hearts, give us your spirit. And when we leave, help us to apply these, these practical lessons that you have given us each and every day. Thank you for all that you do. In your name, amen. God is good all the time. There you go. God is good all the time. So let's see. Perfect. Okay. This works. So the main verse for today is found in Ephesians. It says, in the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds. Today, we're going to talk about forgiveness. It's a topic, it's a special topic, and it's a topic that is very crucial in our lives and also in our spiritual lives. Forgiveness. What is forgiveness? How can I forgive? Those, these are kind of the questions that we're going to go over today. What is forgiveness? How can I forgive someone who has hurt me? Which is not easy. It's very difficult. Forgiveness is not the easiest thing to do. It is easy to be angry at someone. It is easy to hold a grudge. It's just easy. So forgiveness and these are some of the verses that we're going to go over today. Ephesians 4.32, be kind and compassionate to one another. Forgive each other just as in Christ forgave you. Matthew 5.43.44, you have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Matthew 18, 21 to 22. And it says, and Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother when he sins against me? Up to 70 times, seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 70 times Seven. Ephesians 4.32, again, I'm going to repeat this. Be kind and compassionate to one another. Forgive each other just as Christ, God, forgave you. Matthew 6, 1. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Today, we're going to go over a couple stories about forgiveness, one that is very impactful. In this story, you're going to see the power of forgiveness and the beauty that forgiveness holds. This, you can say, is an extreme act of forgiveness, but God calls us to forgive so what happened in this picture? I don't know if some of you may have seen it. It was in the news a while ago. But the father forgave the man who killed his son. His son was killed by this man during a pizza delivery. And the father forgave him. How can he forgive someone who killed his son? What does forgiveness have that makes it so powerful because forgiveness can also transform the person's life that you give it to. Forgiveness. What is forgiveness? Give what Jesus has given you. What comes to mind when you hear that? Give what Jesus has given you. To me, I think about forgiveness. God has forgave me of my sins. If he forgives me, 
then I should be able to forgive others. Give what God has given to you. What's the point of receiving if you can't share it with others? Give what God has given to you. And maybe some of you have come today and, and you're hurt. You're hurt because someone has broken your heart. Someone has broken your trust, your loyalty. Maybe your boss has fired you and you need to support your family. Or maybe you're hurt because someone is picking on you in school. You are hurt. How can I forgive? So today you come with a heavy heart. Maybe you're frustrated. You feel angry. You have this hatred towards someone. But yet Jesus tells us that we must love our enemies and forgive them. And when you hear this, you might be saying, well, he hurt me. How can I forgive that person? How can I forgive someone who has hurt my family member, who has said these mean things about me or my siblings? How in the world am I supposed to forgive? And sometimes maybe you try to go at every angle to forgive this person, but it just doesn't work. You tried every angle, but yet you haven't been able to forgive. If I'm being honest, as I said before, forgiveness is not the easiest thing. It can be one of the most hardest things to do as a human being. It's easier not to forgive than to forgive. So then why does Jesus tell us to forgive and love our enemies? His father forgave the man who killed his son. Every time I see these stories, it leaves an impact in my life. Because how am I supposed to forgive someone who killed my own family? But yet, his father forgave the man who killed his son. What is forgiveness? Before we talk about what is forgiveness, I'm going to mention what is not forgiveness. What is not forgiveness? It's not making what happened right. Forgiveness is not giving the person the right to keep on doing the things they are doing. Forgiveness is not going to always take away what has happened, nor does not mean that you will forget about what had happened. Yes, church, it's not going to be easy. Most of the time, it's hard to forgive. And forgiveness is not fair. What? Forgiveness is not fair? How can you say that? When I mean, when I say forgiveness is not fair, it's not fair that I forgive you despite everything you have done to me. It's not fair that I must forgive you after you hurt my family members, after you hurt my friends. According to this world, what is fair is an eye for an eye. If you hurt me, I can hurt you back. But what Jesus teaches us and what he tells us is that even though they might have hurt you, you must forgive. Why? Why must I forgive this person Jesus says and comes and tells us love your neighbor and forgive your enemies sometimes for us in our human brains forgiveness is just not fair Luke 23 34 says while they were nailing Jesus to the cross he prayed over and over father Forgive them, for they not know what they're doing. Jesus' grace is something amazing. He died on the cross to forgive each and every one of us. And this is the center of forgiveness. This is what it revolves around. Jesus dying on the cross so that our sins may be forgiven. Even on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them. Even on the cross... 
he vouched for us. Let that sink in. It wasn't fair for him to come down, to go through what he had to go through, nailed onto the cross. And that is very painful, to die for you and me, so that we may be forgiven and so that we may have salvation, eternal life. Wow, the love that Jesus has for us is immense. Sometimes I can't even fathom the love that Jesus Christ has for us. Jesus Christ died for you and for me. I know that I have been forgiven many times. God has given me grace when I didn't deserve it, and I'm pretty sure he has given you grace when you did not deserve it as well. As long as we go to the feet of Jesus, he will forgive us. He will forgive me. He will forgive you. He died on the cross so that our sins may be forgiven. He has given us grace. So what is forgiveness? Forgiveness is giving others what God has given us. God has given us grace. God has forgiven us of our sins. So what is forgiveness? Forgiveness is giving others what God has given us in our lives. Because forgiveness is not only receiving, but it is also giving. We receive grace, but we must also give what God has given us. Do you see what I'm saying, church? Do you hear what I'm saying? What forgiveness is? Forgiveness is showing God's grace to others. It is showing what God has done in you to your enemies. Because forgiveness not only transforms us, but it can also transform other people. It can transform the person who killed your son. You've heard these stories. There is power in forgiveness. And so forgiveness is showing and giving others what God has given you and what he has given me. There's many stories in the Bible that talk about forgiveness. One in particular, the story of the prodigal son, who I, if you haven't heard this story, it is a beautiful story because it shows, it talks about a son who left his father for the world. I'm pretty sure the father was hurt that his son left because who wouldn't be? As a parent, it hurts when your son or your daughter leave the house. And in this case, the son got all the money that pertained to him and left into the world, did what he did. And yet when he came back, the father was waiting for him and he forgave him. Forgiveness. What can we learn from the story of the prodigal son? Even though he hurt his father by leaving him, his father still forgave. The father didn't care what he did in the past and yet still forgave him. When you go back to the Father, he will run towards you. But you need to make the first step. Our Father is always waiting for us to come home. God is waiting for you to come home. You will be forgiven. You just need to ask. God died on the cross so that your sins may be forgiven. And today you have an opportunity to not only ask for forgiveness, but to show forgiveness to others. Forgiveness. So why should we forgive? 
Pay attention to this part because it's important. Why should we forgive? What, what are the benefits of forgiveness? Forgiveness is very interesting because if you forgive, you have pros, and if you don't forgive, you have cons. We're going to go over the pros and cons of forgiving and not forgiving. But before we start, let me just ask you a quick question. Do you like holding grudges? Do you like being angry? Do you like being a slave to your own circumstances? Do you like having those grudges or those awkward moments when you're sitting in front of someone that you know you don't like or that you have beef with, if you want to say so? I know I've had it, and I'm going to be honest. It's not the most funnest thing. There was a, I'm going to tell you a quick story. Not too long ago, I met with someone that I knew a long time ago, and we, we've had our own problems. And so I, we went to a mutual friend's house, to say, and for some reason, everyone left, and it was just us two standing there. The most awkwardest thing I've done in my life. I didn't speak. He didn't speak. But there's something about forgiveness that changes people. He said, Emerson, forgive me. I'm sorry for what I did. I didn't expect it. I didn't ask him to forgive. And from that point on, we're like brothers again. So forgiveness is powerful because it transforms relationships. It brings reconciliation. It improves relationships. It heals. It means letting go of the past and living in the present. Forgiveness shows grace. Forgiveness shows what God has done in your life. So there's no need to be angry all the time. There's no need to hold grudges. There's no need to be, I don't know, hangry every day. That's what you want to call it. Mean, make other people suffer because of things you have to work in your life. There's no need for any of this because God has given you the opportunity to let go of the past and to continue living in the present. So what are the benefits of forgiveness? It brings you freedom. It improves your relationships. It heals. It lets go of the past of what's been holding you down up to this point in your life. Showing grace to others. It transforms you, but also the person you're giving it to. Forgiveness brings you peace to continue living your life. And for those people, of you who are in the medical field, nursing, doctor, whatever the case may be, I found this in Ministry Magazine. And you're going to like this. So forgiveness does not only help you spiritually, but it also helps you physically, emotionally, mentally. It's for your own, it's for your own good. God asks us to forgive not only because he commands it but because it's for our own good forgiveness the physical benefits of forgiveness have also been clinically documented and include the following heart healthy improvement blood flow improvement blood pressure improvement an eight-week psychoeducational training model for forgiveness was provided to 25 patients suffering from stage one hypertension. Those who scored high on anger expression measures showed both reductions in the expressions of angers and significant decreases in blood pressure from the eight-week course. So what is this telling me? That God is asking us to forgive, again, not only because he commands it and because we are able to share his grace to others, but because it's for our own good. 
God knows what's best for us. And when he tells us to do something, he tells it to us because he knows what's best for us. And since he knows what's best for us, to forgive is what we need. To forgive is what's best for us. I mean, blood flow improvement, heart healthy improvement, who wouldn't want to forgive? Again, there's no reason to hold grudges. There's no reason to make the lives of the people around us chaotic. There's no reason to because if not, you're not going to have a healthy heart. You're not going to have great blood flow. You're not going to have great blood pressure. And you're definitely not going to be happy for the rest of your life. So to forgive means showing God's grace to others. Forgiveness. Forgiveness is special. So as I said before, there are pros to forgiving, but there are cons when we don't forgive. Because if you have a pro, you always have a con for most things in life. When we don't forgive, we are burdened. When we don't forgive, we hold on grudges. When we don't forgive, you start affecting, I start affecting people around us. When we don't forgive, we become slaves to our circumstances and we start living in the past rather than the present. We are missing out on the opportunity to liberate ourselves and are missing out on the opportunity that God has given us to show his grace and his mercy to others, whether it's to a friend, whether it's to your own family, whether it's to a stranger, to your boss, to that bully in school. Don't miss out on the opportunity to show God's grace. Because at the end of the day, it will transform you. And it can transform the person who's receiving forgiveness. So forgiveness is not only about receiving, but it's also about giving and sharing it. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, the one who forgave us. This is what it all comes down to. It all comes down to Jesus Christ dying on the cross. And there's this quote by Ellen G. White that's found in Christ Object Lessons. And it says, we are not forgiven because we forgive. But as we forgive, the ground of all forgiveness is found in the unmerited love of God. Forgiveness is found in the love of Jesus Christ. But by our attitude towards others, we show whether we have made the love our own. So by showing forgiveness, it shows the impact and the transformation that God has done in our lives. So if we can forgive, what does that say about our faith? If we can forgive someone, even though it's hard, I'm not saying that is easy. But if we can't forgive someone, what is that saying about our hearts? Jesus says, love your neighbors, love your enemies, pray for them, and forgive them. Jesus commands us to forgive. And yes, like everything, it's a process. It's a healing process. So you might not be able to forgive someone in an instant because sometimes it takes a while. It's a process. It takes time. Forgiveness comes from the grace and love of Christ. He calls us to forgive our enemies. It might take time, but that's what we are called to do. It is one of our duties as Christians, as followers of Christ, to forgive because at the end of the day, Christ died for us. The one who gave it all. And he knows what's best for you. So when something like this happens, when, when your boss fires you, you don't know what to do. When someone's picking on you, when... When someone has broke your trust, your loyalty, when they have stabbed you in the back, someone that you admire, 
It's one that you trust in. Remember what God says. Love, trust, not love, pray, and forgive your enemies. Because at the end of the day, it is what Jesus says, and you don't want to be angry for the rest of your life. You don't want to hold grudges the rest of your life. You don't want to affect the people around you in a negative way for the rest of your life. Because life is not worth living that way. God didn't die on the cross so that you can waste your life. He didn't die on the cross so you can just throw everything away. He didn't die on the cross so you can be bitter the rest of your life. He died on the cross to forgive you and I for my sins. And he also died so that you may share the grace that he has given you to others. That is forgiveness. That is forgiveness. The power of forgiveness is that it transforms. It gives freedom. It liberates. And it shows others what God has done in your life. A quick short review. What is forgiveness? Giving others what God has given you. Why we forgive. We forgive because Jesus commands us to forgive. But we also forgive because it's our Christian duty. And through forgiveness, our lives and the lives of others will be transformed. And if you're interested, that's the resource for the study about forgiveness. So church family, as you leave today, if you want to, if you forgot everything that I said today, remember one thing. Give what Jesus has given to you. And your life will be blessed. And the lives around you will be transformed. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, as we leave your sanctuary today, Father, I pray that you may place in our hearts forgiveness and the faith to forgive. It takes faith to trust you, and it takes faith to forgive others. Give us that faith. Help us to be instruments that you can use and transform us each and every day so when the time comes, we will be able to forgive others who do us harm. Thank you for your wise words. Thank you for your guidance. And thank you for dying on the cross. In your name, amen. Next Sabbath, please come. We have another service at 12 o'clock. 11 o'clock is our Sabbath, uh, Sabbath school study. If you go through that door, you're going to find a conference room. Every Sabbath at 11, we have Bible study, so feel free to come. Feel free to participate, bring your family, bring your, bring your friends, invite your enemies because love, pray, and forgive your enemies. So you are dismissed and have a blessed Sabbath.